Hello, welcome to another sim release. This is 0.54b. This wasn't actually the intended release I was putting out, but I, I ended up putting in something that came as a suggestion, and I thought this is pretty good. People will uh, find this quite useful. So I put it out now rather than put some more in it and put it out later. What I'm referring to, and I, I should uh, call out first a guy called Law, who commented on a video about he was having problems. He's got a quite an interesting setup. He was using this HDMI to RF transmitter on his computer and another on his um, fast shark goggles. So he could transmit uh, HDMI wirelessly and he was playing in his goggles. But when he had to come to use the keyboard, of course, because he's got the goggles on, he can't find where the keys are and he'd have to take the goggles off and do stuff. So he wanted to know if there was something we could do in order to make life easier for him. And I thought about this and I thought, oh, this could be quite an interesting idea because if I set something up where people can just use a menu to do stuff, then they won't forget how to use the keys. I often find this is the main problem, um, either playing with people or listening to people. They're like, how do I do this? And I was like, this is in the instructions, it's in the keys menu, it's all there. But of course people have to remember that that facility's there and then they have to remember what the key is or they have to stop the game and escape out and go back and find it and then go back in. It's all hassle. So uh, I've developed this thing I call the quick menu and the idea is instead of using the keyboard if you just hit the mouse button on the sim it will display a list of stuff you can do. Let's jump into the sim now and we'll have a look at it. Uh, as per usual I've got my radio already plugged in so we're good to go there. Um, and here we are in the sim, so if I just go into the, the main sim thing here, and previously of course you would have uh, keys like O and P uh, to put your angle up and down, you've got the V button that changes the, the camera lens and stuff, but if we now just press the mouse button, you see that we've got a whole menu of stuff. And the idea here is it tells you what things you've got to change, it tells you the numbers to press, um, so again, here we got camera angle O and P. I could press O and P. It could just act as a reminder to me. So I was like, oh yeah, it's O and P. Or I could just use the mouse and click on the minus plus, change the camera FOV here, change from FPV to line of sight, uh, change the camera position to external. We've got the motor noise. We've got the the weather here, so I could change and get new random weather. Um, we've got things like. Uh, sticks and crosshairs. Some of these won't show up until we're there. We've got stuff like the flight mode, all the throttle multipliers and stuff like that. Um, if I come out of that you'll see we've got the um, crosshair now and we've got the stick so we can see stuff going on and what an awful camera angle that is. Um, the other thing is it, it's context sensitive. So yeah you'll see I had the the weather menu there so hence I had a, a, a random weather thing. If I went in and I said we don't want weather effects on and I went back in there then that's gone. Similarly you see we've got the reset quad, I can reset quad there but if I go, oh hang on, I've changed my mode haven't I to get angle on. So let's say we've crashed upside down and if we went and hit our button again we now have contact sensitivity so we can flip the quad back over and we can still reset the quad and we can do all those other things. Um, we've got the other things like uh, to go to the menus like the flight assistant stuff. Now if you come back out of that you go back into the main state from them. Um, that's just because that's always the return path. Should you go to a main menu, scenarios menu and you escape out you're always back into um, the main thing instead of being in here. But yeah you can just press the button and of course if you were to go to the scenarios menu and you change that to a plane and then we click on it, we've got a completely different set of uh, things because we still have the different rates and stuff that are set manually on the plane. We don't have that flight assist stuff. And should we go and play online like this, we've got a different set again. First off, the game doesn't pause. You can see we've got our props moving, uh, but we've got differences. We've got uh, the radar we can show to show where the other players are. Uh, it's something that people always forget about when I play online with them and they're, they're like, I can't see you. And I say, have you made the quads big? And they say, what's that? Uh, so you've got the thing to make other quads big, you've got the things to turn the trails on. These are things that are really handy to, to see things. And you can cycle through to the other players' cameras to see what they're up to. Lots of people use that when they're playing things like a game of quad 
um, where they set a trick so you can see through the other person's camera. It just means you don't have to remember um, all these uh, different buttons. You can you can either use this as a reminder screen, you can uh, press buttons from here and have it done or you can use the mouse. So because of the quick menu now we can have a completely keyboardless environment. It is in the game as well. Within the game there's a lot less going on. There's not much to do. You've got We can change the flight mode, the camera angle, the camera FOV, motor noise and if the music's playing or not and then we've got the, the various menus. So all similar. Seems like a small change and kind of it's it's not too much has to put up the UI but because of all the amount of refactoring it does it took a while because we're dealing with uh, a whole new set of scripts that goes and manipulates other methods in other objects and they weren't designed to do that so then I have to go change it all and, and do stuff it's a, it's somewhat of a pain when you're doing stuff kind of organically and sort of making things up as you go it means you have to come back and keep changing your design if the design was like that from the beginning it would have been a lot easier. <laughs> you wouldn't have to like throw away a load of code and write new stuff, but ah, that's the way it is. I kind of like the sort of organic, let's change this because that's how people like it. So what I like about this is the side effect of, of what it is. You may have remembered uh, a little while ago, I tried doing just uh, an experiment for an iOS build and I showed uh, some of you guys that and I was playing with uh, an Xbox controller because you have to on an iPhone, um, but I had to use a keyboard because um, I hadn't designed a touch interface. Because this can be used completely keyboardless, essentially I've created a touch interface, which means I, this is so easy to, to move over to Android iOS now. So I can say that I will confirm I'll be doing at some point, definitely, uh, an Android and an iOS build. So you'll be able to get those on the, the relative uh, Google Play and uh, app stores at some point I'll obviously let you know there's still some more to do in terms of like you need virtual joysticks potentially and uh, we'd have to take all the keyboard stuff out altogether but um, it seemed to run quite well on iPhone so I'm thinking there's a viable option to have mobile platforms here and it was exactly the same code as I'm using on the desktop when I did it last time so you can have complete cross-play um, online stuff as well if you want to. So the other small change for this one is on quad ball. And I have to thank a guy called H84II1, which probably means hate for someone. I don't know what the, the 11 or the II bit means. Hate for something one. Anyway, he wrote a great big piece of feedback about things that he liked and didn't like about quad ball. Um, some really interesting suggestions there. Some of which is like, well, yeah, I meant to do that because this and other things is like, oh, that's a good idea, or I hadn't thought about that. Um, and I wanted to take you through what I have done on this one. What I will say is the, the thing I said I would do last time is do something with the logo, the, the play quad ball. Look, it animates. This was on purpose because um, in terms of what I've done in the game engine, surprisingly, d despite writing a 2D game based around asteroids, I'd never touched the animation component. So this is my first time looking at it and it's just a, a, a way of learning something new because uh, you know there's other projects I might want to do and I might use animation. And so look, it's animating, how exciting. Anyway, one of the suggestions he had, which I thought that's a good one and it's quite an easy change, is on level nine and 10, there are moving platforms. Now, some of you guys might be saying, I haven't got that far yet. And based on the Steam uh, records I can tell because it's like lots of people complete level one and then as it goes on the number of people are doing it shrink down a bit but I'll show you what it looked like because you had moving platforms and one of the problems he was saying is that as you push the ball on when the platforms were lined up it looked like a continuous set of land so you weren't sure if you were onto the next platform or not because there was no delimiter between them uh, and this is how it looked and I've pre-recorded myself playing through the game twice to, to show you this bit and this is what I've done I've put some red markers um, on the the ends of each of the moving platforms so now you know if you've pushed the ball far enough because what would happen is you'd be rolling the ball the platform would start to move and then you roll the ball off anyone who's tried level 10 and has got close to the end and then falls off knows it's a sort of frustrating time so I wanted to make that uh, more straightforward if I could do by showing um, a sort of delimiter between platforms. So that's in there for this one as well. I have to say there does seem to be a certain fear factor from people about quad ball. I don't know if this is the difference between sort of 
gamers and FPVers. I'm a gamer who's also an FPVer, so stuff that's hard and takes a while to master is just stuff I love. I mean, Dark Souls, classic game. It says, prepare to die on the box. And you do, you die thousands of times. It took me 70 hours for one playthrough of this game. Not, not that I was particularly fast of it. So I'm used to sort of going back and retrying and charming new tactics and stuff. Perhaps you guys aren't, perhaps there's, there's, there's a difference here between people who, who enjoy difficulty in gaming and who just like to fly. Um, I'm quite happy to do um, a, a playthrough of the game and record it and give some hints and tips about how I do stuff and the tactics you might employ if, if that's handy to anybody. So the last thing I wanted to mention is about a poll I did in the last release of the sim and I said what should I do next? The runaway winner on this one was having a new level. Uh, there was, what was it? 46% of the vote went for this one, so that's what's going to come in next. Um, I've got an idea, it's probably going to be a, a more defined city level, um, and I'll be doing some testing about whether that sits in the main level or it's its own level in general, and then we'll be looking at some different stuff. But um, yeah, I'll get that one out first. This was miles ahead of uh, the second place, which was the rewrite of the flight dynamics, so the fixed wing plane would work better. That only got 21%, but that'll be coming up afterwards after we do some level stuff so um yeah that'd be coming up next anyway in the meantime um links down below for where you can download it directly from github if you're on steam steam would automatically update for you if it hasn't exit out your client and restart it again and it should up upload you'll see the 0 0.54 and that's how you know you're good to go hope that helps out people that were a bit stuck on the commands hope that helps you out a bit and uh, I'll get on with the next part now and get a new level together and we can test it out. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.